Hey guys, so over the last few months there have been a lot of changes in Ocarina of Time 100% with route changes and version changes, so I wanted to make this video to explain what's been going on and how we got there. For a long time, 100% has been fastest on the N64 version because of some version exclusive glitches. One is a faster way to kill Bongo Bongo, which saves about 30 seconds, but the other more significant glitch is Early Eyeball Frog. This is a glitch that allows you to get Eyeball Frog, an item very late in the Boron Sword trading sequence, very early, and skips the majority of the trading quest. This saves a huge amount of time not only because it skips a lot of trading, but it simplifies overworld movement and frees up routing options. So these tricks made N64 faster, and so most people ran on N64, but some people still chose to run on VC, and VC had its own advantages as well. It has less lag and faster loading, and it can also use Deku Sticks as adult, which would crash the game on N64. And Deku Sticks as adult is important because it allows you to do adult door of time skip and turn your B button into a bottle and go back in time with it. And that allows you quick access to bottle adventure, which allows you to put different items on your B button. And VC takes advantage of this for two important reasons. One is to get Poger Saw on B, and this is VC's best alternative to early eyeball frog. You can still skip a large amount of the trading quest with it, although not quite as much. And you can also get Furrow's Wind on B which allows you to set Furrow's Wind almost anywhere, and this allows for some really unique wrong warps and really fast cutscene skips, although Bottle Adventure takes some extra setup time. In August 2017, a glitch called Equip Swap was found. This glitch allows you to equip an item over a different item slot than usual. This means that adult can equip child items, child can equip adult items, and you can equip the same item multiple times. The biggest use for this is getting the Big Poe Bottle. You can use a quip swap to equip a big po twice, give one to the po collector without losing the original, and repeat the process until you have the bottle, only having to catch one big po, saving a bunch of time by cutting out big po hunting. Equip swap causes some issues with routing though. Equip swap works by equipping an item over the first item slot that the cursor moves to from either side of the screen. And that item slot also needs to be normally equipable. So the cursor will always move to the highest item in the closest column. And you'll see here the cursor will always move to Deku Stick. But Deku Stick can't be normally equipped as adult, and neither can these. So if adult wants to equip swap from this side of the screen, then all three of those items need to be gone so that the cursor goes straight to bottle. Now on this side you have the spells, which are great because both adult and child can equip them. But the problem is that when you do equip swap with a spell with a bottled item, when you use that bottled item, it'll turn your spell into a bottle, and that's exactly what happens when you give the guy a big po, is that your spell will be turned into a bottle, and that's really bad because then it won't be 100% anymore. Now if you get rid of these spells, then your first item slot is Zelda's letter, or the child trade item slot, which also blocks equip swap. There are two possible solutions to this route issue. One is to just skip Deku Sticks and Slingshot in Child 1, and then early on in Adult 1, you could just use this bottle for Equip Swap for Big Po Duping. Or later on, you could RBA either Longshot to get a bottle over Furrow's Wind slot, or Hammer to get a bottle over Neighbor's Love slot, and you could use either of these bottles for Equip Swapping, and then you would get the spells later on. What N64 chose to do is RBA with Longshot for the Furrow's Wind bottle. But the problem with this is that Furrow's Wind had to be delayed, and Furrow's Wind had some pretty good uses early on in the N64 route, and those time saves had to be cut out, but it was all worth it for the time save from Big Poe duping. VC, on the other hand, could implement RBA with Hammer very easily, caused very little issues with the route, and so overall, equip swapping was more of a benefit to VC than N64. In late 2017, we started experimenting with a route idea for N64 that would get the odd mushroom, which would involve doing part of the Bigoran Sword trading quest, and using the timer we get from the mushroom to do a wrong warp from the cutscene where Zelda escapes Hyrule Castle into the Nocturne of Shadow cutscene. This would allow you to do Fire Temple at the end of the run, and then you could wrong warp from Fire Temple to Ganon's castle and skip the Ganondorf fight. This route ended up being faster for N64, but we also realized that VC could do almost the exact same route. Because we had to get the odd mushroom, Eyeball Frog early was delayed so much in the run that up to that point VC could just do basically the exact same route, and then once it got to that point VC only had to do a few extra things instead of a lot more extra things. So even though the route was overall faster, Eyeball Frog early didn't save as much time as it used to. So then we timed the new version of the VC route against the new version of the N64 route, and the N64 route turned out to be faster by about a minute. Then we timed the new version of the VC route versus the old VC route, 
and surprisingly the old VC route actually turned out to be faster by about a minute. We could then use these comparisons to compare the old VC route to the new N64 route and they were about even. But these comparisons didn't take into account lag and loading differences and that benefits VC. So by this point we were pretty sure that VC was now faster. This was all right before HUDQ 2018 where I was already prepared to run 100% on N64. So there wasn't nearly enough time for me to practice or research anything for VC. So we would begin researching VC more after HUDQ. After HDQ, we began working on two things, timing the lag and loading differences between VC and N64 to see how much faster VC really was, and rerouting the VC route. The VC route, even though it was now considered the fastest route, still seemed like it had a lot of issues. It had a lot of really big detours in it that would eventually lead to really big time savers, but it still felt like we could do something to minimize the time loss from these detours, although as we'd later learn, it wasn't quite that easy. So we started rerouting the VC route, and for a while it wasn't really going very well, we couldn't get any good ideas going. And then the idea came up of using Ass Chest, which is a glitch to get Spooky Mask from Gerudo Fortress, which would allow us to skip a lot of the mass trading quest as child and save a huge amount of time in the child section. We began working on implementing this, but it was really hard because Ass Chest has a lot of its own restrictions and requirements to be routed in, and we were already having a lot of trouble rerouting the route before that. It took a long time and a lot of awful route ideas, but after about a month and a half, we finally came to a route that we thought was good, and it became the new route. So now I'll try to briefly go over what's changed between the old and new VC routes. There are a lot of changes, so I'll be skipping over some of the smaller stuff and just go over the major points. In the old VC route, the run would start off pretty standard with Forest Escape and getting Bottle from Kakariko. Then you'd go to Bomb of the Well to get Bomb Chews, meet Zelda at Hyrule Castle, and become adult. Adult would start off normal with getting Hookshot and Hover Roots and then going to Death Mountain. From there you'd go to Tadango's Cavern to get bombs, but you would not finish the dungeon, and you'd later go to Fire Temple and get Hammer, but also not finish Fire Temple. You would then go to Forest Temple and beat it to enable going back in time. You then go back and forward in time for the sole purpose of activating Bottle Adventure to get Furrow's Wind on your B button. You would then go to Lost Woods, set Furrow's Wind there, Go to Deku Tree and beat it as a dull, and then use Furrow's Wind to wrong war from Deku Tree to Spirit Temple. You would then finish up the whole Spirit Temple and Desert Colossus section, which is sped up a lot by having Furrow's Wind on B. After that, you would go to Kakariko, set Furrow's Wind there, go back to Dodongo's Cavern, and use Furrow's Wind to wrong war from Dodongo's Cavern to the Nocturne of Shadow cutscene. After that, you'd go back in time and do the Child section, which would be pretty standard. Then, after you become adult again, you'll activate Bottle Adventure again to get Poacher Saw on B. You would then use Poacher Saw to begin the Bigoran Sword trading quest, finish up most of the important adult stuff, and then when you get to the Light Arrow cutscene, you'll activate Bottle Adventure one more time to get Furrow's Wind back on B. You would then finish the run by going to Fire Temple and wrong warping to Ganon's Castle. So here are the changes made in the new route. Child 1 remains mostly similar, but we do some RBA early on to get some extra bomb chews and an extra bottle. The first thing we do as adult is go get a Pona and kill a Big Po using the bomb chews, since we don't have the bow yet and immediately do big po duping. Before heading off to Death Mountain, after getting hookshot and hover boots, we have to start the Bigorn Sword trading quest and get Kajiro. We no longer go to Fire Temple to get the hammer, and we do all of Fire Temple at the end now. When going back in time to do Bottle Adventure for the first time, we actually do a little bit of the child section stuff. We have to get a Pona's song, and we have to show Zelda's letter to the guard at Kakariko to activate the mass trading quest, because the next time we become child we won't have the letter anymore. After becoming adult again and getting Furrow's Wind on B, the Lost Woods and Decatree section is the same, but after wrong warping to Spirit Temple, the Desert Colossus and Haunted Wasteland section is not done, instead leaving it for later, while still finishing up Spirit Temple now. After the DC wrong warp to Nocturne is when we go back to Desert Colossus, go through the Haunted Wasteland in reverse, and go to Gerudo Fortress from the back. This is where we do Ash Chest to get Spooky Mask. It's important to note that the reason we get Kajiro early on is we need it to RBA the Glitch Quiver, which is what allows Ash Chest to work. This is also why we need Epona Song, because the Archer game requires Epona, and we can't just ride Epona to the Fortress since we come from the Wasteland. We then have to RBA Kajiro right after Ash Chest to get the regular Quiver, so that we can also get the upgraded Quiver from Archery. This is when we do one last trip to Spirit Temple to get one last Gold Skulltula, then use Furrow's Wind to return to Kakariko. The Furrow's Wind point we set when doing Nocturne of Shadow Wrong Warp doesn't actually get deleted when we do the Wrong Warp, so we can use this to get back there quickly. We have to do this because on an earlier trip to Kakariko, we would still have the Glitch Quiver, and if we tried to get the Quiver upgrade then, this would happen.
In the next child section, since we already have the spooky mask, the route is much more streamlined than before, not having to make so many trips to the mask shop and only having to go to Lost Woods once. The adult section is then mostly similar, with the old VC route still having to go to Gerudo Fortress, which is already done in this route, and this route still has to do all of Fire Temple. This route saves about 2 minutes over the old VC route, but we also estimate that VC should save about 3 minutes over N64 from lag and loading, so overall this should be about 5 minutes faster than the N64 route. One last extra bit about the route. There was actually a huge problem with the route that we didn't find out about until we thought we already had everything finalized. It turns out that because of some weird stuff that happens with wrong warps, doing all of Fire Temple in one go and then wrong warping to Ganon's castle actually caused a soft lock, or rather a very long cutscene. This bottom number on the screen right now, the 24010001, is the value of how many frames this cutscene is supposed to be, except that number is in hexadecimal, and converting that to decimal actually gives you about 604 million frames, or about 349 days. Luckily, before we even found out that this was an issue, a route idea was already being worked on that would split water into two parts. It was meant to just be an idea for a small time saver, but putting the second part of Water Temple in the middle of Fire Temple actually avoided the issue completely. It ended up being about even with the old route, except it actually worked. And so that's the whole story of the new route over the last few months up to now. It's been about a month since the main route was finished, but we're still making small changes pretty frequently, and quite a few people have already begun running the new route, including myself. This whole routing process has been a huge collaborative effort and was only possible because of so many people working on the route together. So huge shoutouts to Fig for lots of routing work and lots of timing comparison videos to confirm that the route was faster. Shoutouts to RTA64 for routing work and for the original old VC versus new VC versus N64 comparisons to confirm that VC was faster. Jolin for lots of good ideas and for new strat discoveries during the process. And all the other people who helped with the new or old VC route like Blinny, Danny B, Massachrist, Alien Squeaky Toy, Skirty, and probably more people that I'm missing. So I hope you all enjoy this and enjoy the new route.